like to welcome all of you to our worship service here at Bethany today. Welcome to those who are joining us via Facebook Live as well. Uh, glad to have all of you gathered around God's Word. We are at uh, the third Sunday in End Times, which we call Saints Triumphant Sunday. And so we're going to be focusing on and celebrating the victory that God gives His people by faith uh, for all eternity, but also going to be looking at how that victory that we know is coming affects and shapes our lives even today. So God's blessings as you consider that with me today. Uh, hopefully you grabbed a green guest card on your way in today. Uh, if you would, please take a moment to fill that out during our service just to give us a record of your visit with us. You can drop that in the box provided in our entryway. And then before we begin, take a moment to greet those who are worshiping nearby you. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Then I will invite you to please stand. We'll ask God's blessing on our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We'll stay standing for our first song. can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from
No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. I will rise. Please be seated. We will continue by making confession of our sins and hearing God's word of forgiveness. Dear friends, we have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Our first scripture reading this afternoon comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4. He begins this section by telling his readers, we don't want you to be uninformed. We don't want you to be ignorant about something that's very important. And that something is what becomes of God's people when they die. Paul wants to make sure that we know that they are safely at home with Jesus. And he says that when Jesus returns on that last day, he's going to bring with him those who have fallen asleep in him, those who have died believing in him. And then together with those who are living and believe in Jesus, we all get joined together and get caught up to meet our Lord in the air. And then Paul concludes with this beautiful statement. And so he says, we will be with the Lord forever. That's what it's all about on Saints Triumphant Sunday. So please listen. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of our God. Invite our children here today to come forward for their devotion. Here, get the boys on the right, girls on the left. Good work. All right. So today we are talking about saints. Okay, you ever hear, hear that word saints? Do you know any saints? No? Don't think so, huh? When we think about saints, oftentimes, you know, people think about those kind of people who do all kinds of good things in their lives. So maybe we think of saints who have helped a bunch of homeless people in our country or something like that, or maybe people who traveled to other parts of the world to feed people who are very hungry or to provide clean water for people. They do all kinds of good things in their lives, and 
Now they're at home in heaven with God. We think of saints like that sometimes. But you know what? That's not really what a saint is. Those are some of the things that a saint might do, good things to help other people, things that are pleasing to God. But what a saint is, is somebody who has been forgiven by Jesus, who's had all their sins taken away so that when God looks at them, he sees them as holy in his sight. That's what it means to be a saint. And that's true of every single person who believes in Jesus. Now, do you guys believe in Jesus? Yeah, right? So do I. So what does that mean? All of us are saints, right? Make sure you remind your parents of that later on. Okay, yeah. But that's the truth. That's what God says in his word, that those who believe in Jesus and have had their sins forgiven are saints in his sight. Today we're talking about the saints triumphant, those believers in Jesus who are already at home with God in heaven. We're saints who are still here on earth. We're still fighting against sin and temptation and the devil. But you know what? Because God has promised us heaven, we know that the day is coming when we're going to have that triumph as well. And so what that tells us is that for right now, even as we struggle in this world as saints, we know that Jesus is with us to help us. And we know that when the day comes, He's going to give us that same victory that all of his people who have already died believing in him enjoy right now. So even though we're still here on earth, we can see ourselves as saints triumphant already, thanks to Jesus. Okay, so now you've all seen saints, right? All right, let's fold our hands. We'll thank God for that. Dear Jesus, thank you that in your love, you have made us your saints by taking away all of our sins and declaring us holy in your sight. Help us to live every day as the people you have called us to be. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right, thank you guys. You can return to your seats. Our second scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. Since these are the words of our Savior, I invite you to please stand for our reading. In these verses, we're reminded of something that we'll hear again in our sermon today, that leading up to the day that Jesus returns, things are going to get worse and worse in this world. But our God promises that he is going to be with us, and when the time is right, he is going to deliver us from all of that and give us the victory that he promises his people. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in, in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We'll join in our next worship song.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus, dear friends. The part of God's word that we'll take a look at this afternoon comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 12, reading the first three verses. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of our God. There's a little joke I like to use sometimes when people come in just a little late for Bible study or maybe a little late for confirmation class. It's not something that I came up with on my own. I stole it from a professor that I had in college. He would use it when kids came in late to class. But as a person walks in, I wait to make sure that they can hear what I'm saying I let out a deep breath, and I say, so that's the meaning of life. Any questions? I know it's not all that funny. But I think what makes it a little bit humorous to me is just that thought that simply by being a couple of minutes late, somebody could actually miss out in that short time on something as important as the meaning of life. But you know, here's the thing. The meaning of life, God's big picture plans for his people both now and in eternity, really doesn't take all that long to lay out. In fact, today, we're going to sum it up with two simple words. Rise and shine. That's God's plan for his people for all eternity. And so we want to make that our plan for our lives right now. Rise and shine. In Daniel chapter 12, God fast forwards to the end of all things. This chapter begins with these words, at that time. And the time that God has in mind here is the time right before Jesus returns in glory. God says that time is going to be one of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. Jesus speaks about this very same time in the Gospel of Matthew 24. He says, there will be great distress 
unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. So as the day of Jesus' return draws closer, things are going to get worse and worse in this world. So what does that mean exactly? And you wonder what Daniel thought about that. Things are going to get worse and worse. I mean, Daniel had been taken as a captive by Babylon when he was a very young man, separated from his family, separated from the promised land. That heathen superpower had basically destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, killed and captured many of God's people. And since that time, Daniel had been living in captivity under various governments. And sure, God had blessed him in some tremendous ways during that time, but there's no doubt that Daniel had paid a high price for his faith. He was living through a very difficult period of time in the history of God's people. But God tells him, at the end, Daniel, things are going to get even worse. So, are we living in that time of great distress that Daniel heard about? Or is it yet to come? What should we expect? Well, the Bible tells us that as the day of Jesus' return gets closer, there's going to be all sorts of upheaval in our world. Things like wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, other natural disasters. But we don't want to lose sight of the fact that this time of distress that God talks about is not only physical in nature, but also spiritual. And it may be so very subtle that it's difficult for us to recognize it at times. Remember that Satan's goals are pretty simple. He wants to destroy the faith of God's people. He wants to separate us from our God and to enslave us in his kingdom. And so to that end, he might unleash all sorts of horrors in this world that can stir up all kinds of fear and uncertainty in people's hearts. And he may succeed to a certain extent in causing some people to lose their trust in God through those things. Or maybe through simple worldliness, Satan may just quietly lead many people away from their Savior and away from his word. So many things that we're busy with. So many things that we give our time and attention to in this world. So many questions that are being asked in our world that seem to undermine the truths of God's word. One subtle attack after another that Satan launches. And the result can be that over time, our commitment to our God, our confidence in his word sort of gets chipped away. And the slight shift in our attitude might not even be noticeable to us as it's occurring. But quietly in the background, Satan is succeeding. So in whatever form it comes, this time of great distress is going to precede our Lord Jesus' return. God said so. And maybe we're already living in that time. But God has a promise for his people. He says, at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. God promises to come to our aid during this time of distress by sending this great angelic warrior to fight on our behalf. That reminds us again that this time of distress is not only physical in nature, but spiritual. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, 
and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Which of us could ever stand up to threats like that? And so we thank God for the unseen help that he provides through the holy angels. And we also rejoice in the victory that he promises his people even in the midst of this distress. He says, at that time, your people, Daniel, everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. And the deliverance that God promises here is not only deliverance from the power of Satan, but even more than that, it's deliverance from the power of death itself. God says, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise through faith in Jesus, they will shine like the brightness of the heaven. And those who lead many to righteousness by living as salt and light in this world, they will shine like the stars forever and ever. This is the big picture stuff, right? This is the preview of all that God has in store for us as his people. God is taking us to the very end to comfort our hearts, to give us confidence as we go through life, to let us know that his people, the saints, all those who through faith in Jesus have been declared holy and righteous in his sight, those saints will rise and shine victorious on that day. The Apostle Paul says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. That's what we celebrate on Saints' Triumphant Weekend. That rescue that God has already provided for those of his people that he's taken home to his side. And that rescue that God promises to each and every one of us on the day that it becomes our turn. This is what we're waiting for. That day when the saints triumphant rise in glory. And the one who has called us to that is faithful. And he will do it. And so since we know what God will do for us in the future, then we also know what we need to do right now. Let's rise and shine. To get up each and every day and live and confess our faith before the people of this world. Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 5. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We want to live as the wise in this world. And what does that mean exactly? Well, first of all, it means that we acknowledge and confess the sins that are in our hearts and lives, but also that we believe and we rejoice in the forgiveness that God grants us for those sins through faith in Jesus. Being wise means we see the big picture in life. We know that of all the things that we give our time and attention to in this world, there is simply nothing of greater importance than our time spent growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we heard last week, on that day, on the last day when he comes back, nothing else will finally matter. This wisdom that God gives us through Jesus changes our perspective on everything in this world. We see things differently. We plan things differently. When we consider what we're going to do and what our goals are in life, we always seek to conform them to those greater eternal goals that God already has in mind for us as his people. As wise people, we understand just how fierce the battle is that's raging within us and around us as we walk through this world. And we understand just how high the stakes really are. And so as the wise, we take advantage of every opportunity available to us to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ around God's word and to kneel before his altar and receive that sacrament 
because we know that we need that strength for our struggle. The wise look at life differently in this world. They see things the way that God sees them and see the end so that it guides the present each and every day. Rise and shine. That's what God has in store for us, and that's what we want to do right now. But not just for our own sake, but for the sake of others as well. God says, those who lead many to righteousness... They will shine like the stars forever and ever. What an awesome privilege we have as God's people to be a part of that work. We heard Jesus promise last week that the day is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. It's the same promise that God gave to Daniel. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. The point is this, that the day is coming when God is going to wake everybody up, some to eternal life, some to shame and everlasting condemn, contempt. But the truth is, God sincerely desires that every single person in this world would wake up right now. That right now they would come to know him as their only savior from sin. Well, as people who by God's grace have already been Awaken to his love and to his promises. That means that we want to make it our goal to wake many others so that they too can share in all that God has promised for his saints triumphant. Sometimes it's kind of a difficult question to ask. Have somebody stop into my office or they call me on the phone a loved one of theirs, a friend, a neighbor, family member has died. They're sad. They ask for prayers. And of course, I want to give them words of comfort as well. But I have to know, was that loved one a believer? It's not a question that we want to be wondering about after the fact. It's a question we want to know the answer to right now. Whether it be our children, our friends, our co-workers, whoever God brings into our lives, when that opportunity presents itself to us, let's not pass it by thinking, ah, this is just not a good time. What if it's the only time? Let's not pass it by by thinking, oh, if I say something to them, they're not going to be very happy with me. Well, how are they going to feel on the last day? How are you going to feel? Let's not pass it by as if this is somebody else's work. If not you, if not me, then who? We are the ones who God has placed into this world to be salt and light. We are the ones whom God has called to sound the wake-up alarm so that many more may join us on that day. Rise and shine. That's what God has called us to be and to do in this world. So it's pretty simple, right? Just those two words. In fact, the book of Daniel closes with a single verse that really captures everything that we've been talking about. It's God's final words to Daniel. He says, As for you, Daniel, go your way till the end. Keep on doing what I've called you to do as one of my people. Keep working, Daniel, because the time is short. But know this, Daniel, you will rest, and then at the end of days you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. That's God's promise to all of his people. That is ultimately the meaning of life. Any questions? Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to please stand. We'll join in confessing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue our service with a selection by our worship band. I 
know you saved me and your grace will never fail me if while i'm waiting i'm not waiting i know heaven lives in me i'll sing holy holy my heart cries holy as it is in heaven it is in me i'll sing holy continue with our prayers. I invite you to join your hearts with mine. Lord of eternity and King of saints, all the heavens adore you. Saints and angels sing before you. We join them to praise your majesty. You clothe us with garments of splendor. You bless us with grace and mercy in this life and eternal glory forever. What undeserved love you show us. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us your saints. Encourage us by those gracious promises. Forgive our failures to live as you desire. Strengthen the faith of all who are weak and wandering. And give us power to live as your faithful people. Your saints will triumph forever in new heavens and a new earth. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. We anticipate with joy an eternity of perfect fellowship with you. So be with us as we work and witness for Christ so that many more people can join us before your throne. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you today on behalf of our sister Mary Shabo, who will be undergoing hip replacement surgery this Wednesday. We ask that you would be with the doctors and all who assist. Give them success in their work. Let things go just according to their plan and yours. Let that surgery be a success and then grant Mary a quick and full recovery so that she can return to her regular routine very quickly. We entrust her to your loving and powerful arms. Lord of life, the day is coming when you will come down from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. On that glorious day, the saints triumphant will rise, clothed in your perfect righteousness. Give us strength until that day when we will share fully in the glory of our Lord Jesus, in whose name we also join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand for our closing worship song. The 
It then once was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet, now at His feet we bow. and sisters go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.